when placing your hive, you want to look for a place that has afternoon shade, uh, especially in our summers. Not so much in the winter, but when the temperatures are over 90 degrees, you definitely want to shade your hive. Um, you can make this complex or simple. You can build a covering over it. You can use shade cloth. Um, you can build a pallet wall, or you can simply place something like a board or styrofoam on top of the hive to help shade it from the afternoon sun. Now that you've found the perfect place for your hive, how high does your hive need to be? You do want to keep it off the ground. This helps prevent as much pest and animals from getting into it. You can put it on a built hive stand. You can put it on blocks with wood. You can put it just on cinder blocks, or you can place it on a pallet. You do want to keep in mind that you don't want to put your hive so high up that when you have three or four supers on it, that you have to get on a ladder or a step stool to remove those. So ants can be a problem here. Um, here is one type of ant guard, and here is a, another type. Um, I've seen people make things out of bowls. You can get creative, um, but those are just a couple things that you could purchase. So now you're ready for your bees. Are you going to try to catch a wild swarm? If you do, be prepared that they could be aggressive and you will definitely need to requeen. Or you could order a package of bees. If you order a package, um, you will be starting off with empty frames unless you already have some pre-built frames. And what I recommend is to buy a nucleus. Several of us here sell nukes, um, myself included. <clears throat> These are the best way to get started because you are starting with five frames of bees that already have resources, eggs, larvae, and the queens are already laying. Uh, this is the best way to get a head start of the season. When to feed your bees. When you get a new hive, a new colony, or you move your bees, you're going to want to feed them. One of the main staples here is a one-to-one -one sugar syrup. Uh, you can look online. There's plenty of recipes. Just remember that you're going to measure it by weight, not by measuring cup. So you'll also want to feed pollen patties or pollen sub powder. And then in the winter time, um, your bees might need fondant, although it is pretty warm here, so it's not necessarily needed here. They do pretty good with the sugar syrup. So sometimes people see this behavior and they get worried. They think it's robbing. The thing to keep in mind is to look at how they're moving. See how they're moving in a figure eight. If they were robbing, they'd be darting back and forth. They'd be trying to get into the cracks under the lid. Uh, they would try to be entering where the entrance is not. This is just a normal orientation flight. This is good. So here's the typical cast in the bee colony. You're going to have your worker bees, your queen bee, and your drones. This is a nice image to reference to kind of help you figure out how to find your queen. A lot of times you might see a drone and think it's a queen. Pay attention to the thorax and the abdomen on the queens. And then here we have the normal uh, life cycle of the honeybees. You can see that um, the drones have the longest gestation period and the queens have the shortest. Uh, this is another helpful image here um, for identifying the eggs and the different stages of the larvae. Um, sometimes it can be difficult to find the eggs. Um, it helps to kind of shine them with the sun to your back. Another good thing that helps is having black foundation. It is easier to see white eggs on a black background. So here's what a typical frame should look like in the brood box. You see you have your, um, your larvae, your brood, your pollen, and then your honey or nectar. Um, it's sometimes kind of referred to as the rainbow. And then here is um, kind of what you want to look for for your brood pattern. You see how the full one... Uh, there's not a whole lot of empty spaces. That means the queen's laying really well. 
Uh, also keep in mind that when you get a new queen or you put a new queen in a hive, she does need a little bit of time to get started and get going really well. So if you just put a new queen in and you see the spotty brood, do not get worried. Just give her a little bit of time and I'm sure she'll get into her groove. Here's a helpful image that shows you the different types of brood. You can see the drone cells stick out a little bit more, but they're kind of straight out. And you see the queen cells kind of go out and down. I like to call this uh, kind of like a peanut. And then here you see um, queen cups. So bees will make queen cups on a pretty regular basis. Um, you can look inside. If you don't see any royal jelly or any eggs or larvae in there, you don't really need to be concerned with it. Um, however, you do want to be concerned if you do see a lot of queen cells, um, especially if they're capped. So this is one reason why it is suggested that you check your hives at least every 10 to 14 days, since it takes 16 days to make a queen and they have to have an egg to make it. So the eggs stay eggs for three days. Um, so if you check at least every 14 days, you can catch it before the queen is formed and hatched. Um, and then if you do see queen cells, this is where you are going to want to make sure that you don't have any queens in there and purchase a nice sweet queen and requeen your hive. Here's a quick little chart I like to reference a lot for the different types of bees that we do have here. Um, the most commonly that we do use here are the Italian, uh, Italian Cordovan, and the Carney Owens. But feel free to experiment with all of these and share what you learn. So when you get your new queen, uh, she is usually painted. If not, I do recommend you paint them. It does make it easier to find them in the hive. And here is the international color chart. So this year it is blue, and next year it's going to be white. So wax moths are one of the most common problems here. Wax moths are in every hive, but a good strong hive can keep them at bay and keep them from causing damage. So these are just some examples of the stringy kind of webbing looking that you might see if the larvae are eating through. And then right here, this is a severe infestation. At this point, your hive is in critical condition and may not be salvageable. Uh, the other big problem we have is Vero. Vero mites are um, pretty bad. You do need to treat two or three times a year for these. Um, one sign is if you see deformed wing. This can be a sign of uh, Vero mite in your hive. So this helpful beginner information should help you off to a great start. But what I highly recommend is that you get a mentor or take some classes. Several people here offer mentoring, me as well. I live in the North Phoenix area. I know Roy has um, a bee yard that you can go to on Sundays. I know Cricket does classes down at the worm farm. And several other people will take you under their wing to help you uh, learn about the bees. And of course, um, the Facebook pages are very helpful, resourceful information as well.